Uh, um, Marie Claude really wanted to come here, and she uh, asked me to 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 salute every uh, every everyone here, uh, and I will bring uh, uh, her uh, a few a few memories from uh, from this great moment. And um, she has been uh, working, um, contributing to uh, to a project which is called La Cave, which is a very important uh, uh, project uh, led by uh, colleagues of the Inner in France, uh, looking at uh, the impact of climate change and how do you adapt to this and I think the the the, the spirit of the of this uh, conference is a little bit about it you, you know the the global idea is you, you've got a, a system which is vitive in the culture with uh, different connections social implication economical application technical applica uh, implication geographical implication as well and with the one of the element uh, uh, trying to push this system uh, perturbating the system which is uh, climate, uh, climate change you need some resiliency plasticity or adaptation and and they have been during this uh, in, uh, in France uh, this French project uh, uh, an idea of trying to project uh, prospective uh, analysis and this kind of part of this uh, spirit trying to you got the burgundy system which is a very old one and, and you just look at how it's gonna uh, change in time so uh, uh, um, I'm going to flip to the to the slides. I won't be able to 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 to, to be as accurate as I told you before. Um, and um, uh, she, the her look uh, as a as an economist is uh, you got uh, uh, with um, uh, one production, see climate and nature. It's a relevant and persuasive production factors in viticulture as land, capital, and labor, and everything is interacting. And she wanted to 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 present a little bit. The, the specificity of Burgundy, which uh, uh, first is a familial and specific small, uh, medium-sized uh, estates, uh, scattered. It's uh, very common that uh, one family winery has plots in many villages, uh, 30, 40 kilometers apart, so they need to, to move the trailers and stuff. Uh, and uh, often, uh, most of the time, you have, uh, the person is a grape grower and a, wine, uh, a winemaker, um, and also a vendor, is a vigneron. Uh, and uh, it's got uh, permanent, occasional uh, workers, and there's a lot of, uh, of plots, what I explained before. And there is a high specificity of uh, each plot, even if the, if the topography is not so, so changing, like uh, what you could see in Switzerland, for example, uh, there is quite a lot of uh, diverse uh, exposure, uh, altitude and slope and a lot of um, uh, land uh, cover uh, that might affect. Here's an example, it's a, I would say, counter example of, uh, of uh, a Grand Cru. It's the highest level of um, recognition, the, uh, the highest uh, level of appellation of origin, which is very, very expensive wines. And uh, you might, most of you might know this uh, Clos de Vougeot, uh, which is in fact uh, um, a kind of something very specific because it, uh, it's a very, very big Grand Cru. Usually it's, it's a bit smaller. So it's 50 hectares, uh, about uh, 136 acres and it shares by 85 different owners another example so this is a map of the owners ownership and the so you, you, you usually do uh, you, you saw a few rows and then if you don't know uh, the, um, a pole change color or something and uh, it's a, it's another uh, owner so only only four rows and then it changes uh, you, you, we see something similar, 18 owners in uh, Le Mont Rachet, which is a famous white uh, wine uh, Grand Cru in uh, Côte de Beaune. So it's uh, 8 hectares and uh, 18 owners, 26 producers, so that's quite a lot. Oh, I'm going back there. Um, and they are uh, trying really for the same uh, uh, climat. We talked yesterday about climat, uh, so this is a kind of a definition for terroir in Burgundy. Uh, you got uh, so uh, they, uh, they, there's more than 600, perhaps more different terroirs recognized on the bottle. Usually, you write 
premier cru and underneath the, the name of the uh, Klima under, under, uh, on the bottle. So it's, if you're not as an expert, it's very difficult to know where, where it comes from. But you can find, there, is a, there are some apps and uh, some websites when you can uh, find the specific location. And there is uh, uh, four uh, different uh, rankings of wine. So the gr uh, Grand Cru comes on the top, then the Premier Cru, uh, then the Village Appellation, and then the, the Regional Appellation. And that's true then in Burgundy, we, we're like at crossroads for climate. We got Mediterranean influence sometimes coming, coming down from the Mediterranean Sea. Most of the climate is uh, oceanic because we're not that far away from the ocean. So we, we get a, a lot of uh, masses from the Atlantic and also some um, masses from uh, Northeast Europe, North Europe, Northeast Europe. And uh, that kind of makes a uh, really changing climate. You can, we can have uh, heat waves, but also uh, hard frost. And in fact, we experienced this uh, even slightly, uh, all those kind of different influences. Uh, for, I, I can pick as an example, and I will switch quickly to, to this. Uh, if you look at the data, frost risk has fallen down. I mean, the, the number of uh, days with minus one uh, since uh, 30, 80 years, uh, uh, 30, 40 years has been going down for the same date. But this year, we had um, minus one, minus two, I recorded at weather station, which means a little bit lower at the plot level, because you know the, the rows in Burgundy are very low, close to the ground, which is uh, usually uh, cooler during uh, freezing, freezing nine or cold. And we had this cold air mass coming from the uh, north, northern Europe, uh, Scandinavia, or, and, and it just went down and then west. west and a lot of uh, the vineyards in France uh, got damaged. In Burgundy, the estimates just after, after the, this event was about 50% of the damage. But I'm, I, I don't know. We, they're going to check now after the flowering. It, it might be a little bit less, but still they are very preoccupied because it's, it's uh, uh, an event that destabilizes uh, a lot the economy there. And uh, okay, and um, so that's one of the challenge, uh, an example of the challenge. So um, yeah, there was a, a lot of damage uh, uh, in the in the plot, and they got, they are, there is a few equipment. There is a, in Chablis, in northern uh, Burgundy, you you have. Um, uh, sprinklers, you have uh, in Von Romane you get uh, wind machines and mostly the, a little bit of, of heaters but there were but a lot of uh, people are not prepared because it's it's really uh, it was really an exceptional event but it can occur in 2009 winter fr uh, winter freeze winter cold damage 40 hectares not that much compared to the 33 hectares of the of the area so I think that's one of the points, plus, plus hail. Hail uh, has been going on a lot in the media. Now they're looking at is there specific plots that are always damaged by, by hail. So and in, uh, in southern Burgundy and Beaujolais, Beaujolais, this is uh, uh, 13th of April. Normally it should be a little bit green, but you don't see anything. Some, it was, uh, on some plots it was the moon, no, nothing left. Yeah, so, this day, northern uh, France and no northern Europe, but also a little bit in Portugal, if you add with, uh, to this the mildews, uh, we had a very hard, we've been experiencing in all this area of the world, uh, very uh, uh, hard pressure in, in downy mildew. It's, it's been a very strange year. Uh, okay, and, and plus with climate change, you will have, uh, uh, we are expecting a, a more intense uh, rain event, so a lot of uh, erosion. And, but it's been uh, done f since a long time. And that the, the second point, and I, and I, and I will flip f through this. Uh, um, so to, to support this change in climate, and uh, they are uh, used to that because, uh, as I said before, it's on the crossroad of uh, different climate conditions. But they, uh, the, the wine growers there, uh, do things collectively. And a good example is the uh, uh, fighting about uh, ail. Uh, they're trying to, they have been through ail suppression program. So everybody uh, gives a little bit of amount of money per hectare, even those that are not affected by, by ail lately, but they all contributing to uh, build a system, a regional system with a, a hail, um, how do you say, uh, so that diffuse a little bit, some chimneys that, uh, that diffuse some uh, potassium uh, uh, 
uh, dust that goes in the air and uh, for, for air suppression. Okay, so that's one of the examples. Um, and another example of this collective uh, action is, uh, but it's, it's something that you can uh, find throughout Europe, is the, but they, they did very good with managing the flavescence doré, you know, phytoplasm that, uh, that is uh, a quarantine disease in France. And uh, in Burgundy, they tried to, to control it, and now it's, it's uh, uh, yeah, almost uncontrolled. Uh, so all the grape growers go in their own field, but also in the neighborhood field, and just try to, to, to spot some symptoms. And uh, I, I have to admit that uh, it works pretty well. So this is a, a good way to adapt. And, um, and also, <coughs> I think I'm, uh, I'm almost done there. There were some uh, older uh, example of climate and change in, in harvest. Um, but this uh, uh, spa uh, spatial, um, excuse me, <laughs> um, this spatial organization of, uh, of Burgundy plus the change in climate uh, means that uh, the vigneron, and I think that the main point that uh, Marie-Claude wanted to share with you today is that this capacity to adapt that has been developed for uh, uh, centuries and the climate has, has changed, it's not, it's not only now, before you get the, the little ace age and, and, and so on. But through the ages, they try to, to, to keep a good image of Burgundy, of Burgundy wines, and I think the, there is a capacity of the, of the human, of the wine growers, uh, vine growers and wine, wine makers to, to, to adapt to climate condition and stay uh, uh, doing things collectively to, to, to bring up a, a premium, premium quality wines. And now one of the recognitions, of course, was the UNESCO World Heritage. Uh, it has been told yesterday already, so la la last year. And I think that's it. A little picture of uh, George Clooney drinking uh, Burgundy there. Okay, thank you for your attention.